this is Sigma Day 2 and we are here with Olga Finkel. Olga is the founder of WH Partners and is widely regarded as an expert in gambling and technology law. Thank you for joining us, uh, Olga. Uh, Malta has closed on several MOUs with other jurisdictions. Will this help the gaming operators? Well, from the point of view, if, if we expect that the MOU will allow the gaming operator to go somewhere to another jurisdiction and start operation without a license, then the answer is no. It will not go that far. But I think overall it will still allow the gaming operators to, uh, to reduce the cost of compliance and to make the licensing process in another jurisdiction easier and faster because of the recognition and then alignment of different standards uh, between different jurisdictions. Um, how does cybercrime impede on the gaming industry? Well, gaming industry is an industry where the main resource, main asset is data and it is online effectively. It's spread all over the world, especially with the introduction of uh, cloud computing into the industry. So uh, every concern of an industry that deals with data is also a concern of the gaming industry. And uh, from the point of view of cybercrime, obviously whoever wants uh, to hack an operator, for example, to extract the data, the uh, player database, for example, for further exploitation elsewhere, or to uh, go into a, a player's accounts with financial information and use it without authorization, obviously that would present a, a problem for the operator. And with this respect, the security of data is of utmost importance for this industry. Thank you. Um, how protected are the players um, and what role does data sover sovereignty play in cross-border gaming? Well, data sovereignty is the power of government, of the state, to exert rights over uh, data which is residing in its territory or passes through uh, its territory. But ultimately, it's the power of the regulator to extract the data from the operator. And from this point of view, the operator has to be sure that he knows where to find this data. Uh, but, but overall, I think from the protection point of view, I think the players, which are customers of the gaming operators, are not less protected than uh, customers of any online business. Uh, we've seen uh, cases of uh, information uh, basically accessed from different governments and the credit cards, uh, for example, being disclosed uh, by different industries, by the banking industry. So whether the regulation is for banking is good enough uh, and it still can be a problem, then I think the same can be applied for the gaming industry. Therefore, I think overall the protection is in line with the best industry practices, but there is always uh, room for improvement. Thank you. And the last question, should the US market re legalize online gambling across all states? Um, what is your take on the possibility of European gambling operators seeking to consolidate with US operators? Well, I wouldn't be as presumptuous as to say what the states in the United States of America should do or shouldn't do. They decided for themselves. I can only say that I think it's uh, strange to say the least in 2014 to say that this activity should be prohibited. Uh, from the point of view of consolidation, the industry is consolidating overall uh, and across the border. So once the more and more states in the US open up, it's quite natural that the operators who are experienced in the online gaming outside of the US would like to go in and often uh, they will require a, a partner and therefore that will be uh, one of the reasons, one of the drivers for consolidations. And also the local operators in the US who have experience in the land bank industry but with the opening of the online market would want to go online would also need expertise that they would like possibly to acquire quickly. And so this is another driver. So uh, I think that we will see quite a few consolidations across border. Thank you very much for joining us. This is Roxana Zaharia on behalf of Sigma.